This video is going to focus on the adding of macros to the project. Macros are very useful and very powerful. Uh, macros allow you to perform multiple tasks uh, in sequence as a result of a single uh, uh, button push perhaps. Um, good examples are turning a system on that might involve turning on multiple components or switching inputs. Anytime you want to do multiple things in one go then that's where a macro is um, very very powerful so macros are added to my project down here remember I'm under the BC4 there's all my connected devices under here it says BC4 macros and macros uh, on a BC4 there's always a macro 1 and a macro 2 um, macro 1 is a startup is the startup macro basically anything that you put in here will be executed on power up of the BC4. So if there's anything you want to reset like uh, screens or projector lifts or any variables of that nature, um, variables you want to reset to zero, that kind of stuff, then you can put it in the startup macro and that will happen once on power up. The looping macro, anything you put in the looping macro will execute whenever the BC4 is not busy doing something else. So uh, if you want to check the status of something continuously or you want to have counters incrementing uh, for timed events, then you can utilize the looping macro to enable that sort of functionality. Uh, very powerful. But when you're adding new macros, resist the temptation to uh, uh, rename these and, and reuse them. Otherwise, you'll get all sorts of weird results. Uh, so to add a new macro, um, I'm going to right-click on macros and go add new macro. Now any projects, you typically want a macro for turning the system on, turning the system off, and navigating to each particular source, be it your Skybox, your Apple TV in this case. So I'm going to want four macros uh, for my little home cinema surround sound lounge project. So macro three I've added, I'm going to go edit and then name it appropriately so I know what it does. Uh, I'm going to add a system off macro. Just going to go through here and add all my macros. And I'm going to want a macro to be for um, going to sky. So I'm going to call it go to sky. And that will set up all my inputs that we'll do in a minute. And my other source I've got is uh, my Apple TV, so I'm going to call that go to Apple TV. Okay, so there's the four macros that I need for my particular project. Now I want to actually program the macro to do stuff. Uh, so my system on macro, if I want to ed uh, edit it, I highlight it and hit edit again. Now this window's active and I can drag and drop IR codes. So I'm going to want to turn the TV on. So I'm clicking and dragging and dropping with the left mouse button the power on IR code and then release it within the macro editor. And now you can see the first line of the macro will be to send the pulsed IR key to turn on the TV. Um, I also want to make sure my various devices are awake. Apple TVs do fall asleep uh, and just by pressing the menu button that wakes them up. And Skybox is also fall asleep, and um, quite a handy tip is the Sky button uh, will wake it up. If it's already on, then it does nothing, and if it's off, it'll wake it up. So there's no harm in uh, in adding that. So uh, if I had a surround sound uh, amplifier, I want to turn that on as well, but I haven't got one in this particular project. And now I can hit save. Uh, system off for that macro. Really, all I need to do is turn the TV off. Um, I don't need to turn the skybox off. I don't really want to because someone might be watching in a different room. So I'm just going to leave everything else on. Uh, the Apple TV will go to sleep if it's not being used anyway. So again, if I had a surround sound amp, I'd turn it off in this macro here. Uh, so that's my on and off macros. Uh, go to sky. So this is when I press this button, no matter what situation I'm in, when a user presses the Sky symbol on the home screen, I want him to end up watching Sky. Uh, bulletproof coding, no matter what situation is. Even if the whole system is off and he's ignored the system on button, I'm going to turn everything on for him. So a bit of repetition. Um, I'm going to make sure the TV's on. 
I did check that's a discrete IR code, so if it's already on and I send the on command again, it's not gonna cause a problem. Um, I need to set the TV onto HDMI 1, because that's where all the video feeds come from, from my Gefn matrix switcher. Speaking of which, I need to switch the matrix switcher to ensure I'm switching Sky through to the telly. Sky is plugged into the matrix switch on input one, and code one, two, three, four, switch between sources one, two, three, four for screen one. So for input one, I need IR code one to switch the Sky through to screen one. And again, the Sky box might be asleep, so I'll just sneak that little Sky code in there. So I'm turning the TV on, putting it on HDMI 1, switching the GFN switch to switch Sky through to the telly, and making sure the Sky box is turned on. Now, um, if I want to reorder the sequence of things here, um, if I want to turn the Sky box on first, I could just drag it and pull it up to the top and let go, and now it'll do that IR code first. Um, if I want to um, reorder things anyway, I can just do that at any time within my macro. One thing to watch out for, TVs take quite a long time to turn on. There is a risk here that if I send my HDMI 1 code straight after I've turned the TV on, uh, it might not pick it up because it's still too busy turning on. So what I might want to do is put the TV on command first, then go and do my Sky command and my GFN command and put the TV on HDMI input 1 last to give it a bit of time. If that's not long enough, I can double click on here, and this brings up a little dialog box where I've got a number, that's the action that we're doing. We're sending an IR command to the TV. It's a single pulse to turn the HDMI, to put it to HDMI one. Um, I've got a little tab here that says delays. If I want to, I can delay that for two seconds, uh, or what, whatever number of seconds I require. Um, that will then allow me to make sure, and a little bit of trial and error, I can just test it out, see how long it takes for the TV to come on. Uh, whilst I'm in here, I've also got evaluations. So I can actually um, evaluate criteria as to whether or not that line in the macro should be executed. It could be a variable, uh, it could be down to temperature, it could be down to relay status, or if any of my GPIOs were active and enabled, it could be down to the GPIO status. So this is how you can see how you'd use the GPIOs to decide whether or not to send an IR code to turn something on or off based on whether it's already on or off, if you've got one of those nasty toggle codes. But for this, what I'm going to do is put a delay in, hit OK, and you can see now it says delay for two seconds before sending that IR code to switch to Sky. And lastly, I want to uh, do my uh, Apple TV navigation. So again, uh, I'm going to make sure the TV's on, going to make sure the TV's on HDMI 1. This time, my GFN switcher needs to be switched to input 2. Um, and I'm also going to want to make sure my Apple TV is awake by sending the menu home button. Again, I might put the HDMI input to last and add a delay of two seconds to make sure the TV is powered up properly before it um, uh, actually uh, switches the HDMI input. Okay, great. So I've now got my macros all programmed. Important thing to notice to note is that macros actually live on the hardware. Macros live on the BC1 or the BC4. So we can't test these until we upload the macros. Uh, to upload the macros, um, I can either go to the BC4, right click and go upload this BC4, or I can go to program and upload all units. And that will then upload the macro uh, the macros, all macros to the to all devices, uh, because you can't test them until you've uploaded them. I've already done that earlier, um, so I can now right click and go test, um, and then I can test that. Um, of course, this project's reminding me that I have that I need to upload them. So even if you've forgotten to upload them, the software does remind you. Uh, so what the hell? I'm going to upload the macros anyway. There we go, so I've uploaded the macros. Now I can go in and test. 
and what that's done now is that's now executed that and my system you can't see that but it is switched on successfully and now I can try the off macro and yep that switched off the TV that's pretty well what it does now my system's off right now so now I'm going to execute the sky macro so I execute that and my TV's turned on and my matrix is switched to the right input and it's made sure the sky box is awake and it's lastly sent the HDMI input so I'm now watching sky right click and test the Apple TV macro and lo and behold I'm looking at Apple TV great stuff so now I've created all my macros and I've tested them uh, really would like to I know I've reinforced it a few times already test as you go that really makes sets you up for success when it comes to your final uh, implementation going to leave it there for this video and I'll speak to you on the next one. Thank you.